Hey guys, it's me, the Don Flatic, and welcome to my week one team builder for the UPBA season one week one game versus the Los Ampharos, which is managed by Dreadful Dragon Knight. Now, if I keep looking down at my phone, it's because I've got my spreadsheet open on there with the drafts open. For you guys, what I will do is I will take a screenshot of the drafts and put them just un underneath my webcam here, my own and my opponent's. Um, just so you can obviously make your own mind up of what's going on along the, along while I'm talking, whether you guys would do anything different, etc, etc. But basically, drafts are underneath, and this is just going to be a quick sort of fly-by explanation of, of what my team is. I built this like nearly two weeks ago probably now, so um, if I've forgotten some things, I, I apologise, but there was a lot of thought going into this team. I'm actually taking this quite seriously this season, um, after my letdown season in PTL that's just gone by. Um, so, so I'm actually taking this quite serious. I've got quite a serious team, quite you know nice synergy, and I want I want to win this thing. Obviously, why would I enter it without wanting to win? But yeah, I just go over the drafts quick to remind myself, just as much as you guys. Um, my opponent has got the Mega Altaria, Weavile, Scizor, Gliscor, Mill Tank, Blastoise, Blacephalon, Mian Shao, Mike and Rock Day, Dewblade, and Zeb Striker. And just to remind you guys, uh, guys, my uh, my draft is Megalopony, Tyranitar, Reuniclus, Superior, Excadrill, Rotom Heat, Noivan, Alamomola, Gardevoir, Shuckle, and Haunter. Um, sort of when I built my team, I realised I had a very good matchup uh, this week. I think that my opponent has a really hard time dealing with a lot of things namely my um, namely my Alan Mola his only thing he has to hit with stab super effective is Zeb Striker otherwise he has no grass type and no other sort of electric coverage now that I look outside of maybe does Altaria get Thunderbolt? I don't know I'm assuming it does as a dragon um, so yeah um, they're the teams we've got. Immediately I look at Excadrill and I look at uh, Megalop and I look at Alamomola. Um, other things I just sort of built into the team as I went along. But I'm just going to go into what I've got here. I don't want to keep these videos too long. I want it to be nice and short so you guys can actually kind of pay attention. Um, you guys can't see the, the six I've brought up along the top here, which is quite nice actually now that I think about it. But obviously you guys have seen that the first Pokemon I decided to bring is Megalopony. Um, as I said, my opponent does have a Mega Altaria, a Weavile, a Scizor, Miltank, Gliscor, uh, Blacephalon, Mian Shao. I'm just looking at things that I can hit super hard, Lycanroc, Dublade. Like, my opponent has no real switch-ins to, uh, to Elopony. I mean, Ice Punch is only there for Gliscor. Uh, which can't take a return, and Ice Punch or two Ice Punches, and Fire Punch is just purely there for Scizor. Otherwise, I can just pretty much click Drain Punch against this whole team. Um, his only resist is Gliscor and Mega Altaria, um, but he has to, obviously, actually without Mega as well, he does resist fighting, I guess, but again, there's also not really a downside to me clicking Return, because his switch in to Return is Dewblade and Lycanroc Day. Um, neither of which can really switch into a Drain Punch, so probably aren't going to come in against this thing anyway. So yeah, my opponent's draft really doesn't face up well against Megalop. Um, EVs are quite simple. Uh, Jolly, uh, with enough speed to outspeed a Weavile, and then the rest in attack and the rest in HP. Um, I don't expect my opponent to bring sort of any sort of hazards. He's actually saying that he hasn't got any hazards other than Stealth Rock. And even when I say that, he's only got Stealth Rock on Lycan Rock and Gliscor. Um, of which I think he also only has... Yeah, he only has Def... I know he has Blastoise, but he has Defoggers as well, which, you know, if, if he wants to get rid of his own hazards, that's fine by me. So yeah, that's the first one, Megalop. But just, you know, it does Megalop things. It's got a really good matchup offensively against his whole team. He hasn't really got any checks to it. So the moment I get this thing mega I can just kind of spam return and then either one of the free follow-up moves to, uh, to to kill something off, which is nice. So secondly, we've got uh, the Rotom Heat, Rotom Yeet. Um, basically one of my two kind of answers to Mega Altaria, because I don't think many things on my opponent's team actually threaten me that much. Um, I guess the biggest threat would be a Blacephalon that sets up, or maybe a Lycanroc that sets up. Um, otherwise, I don't fear too much of its offense. Um, but we have gone for Volt Switch, Defog, Overheat, and Hidden Power Ice with Leftovers and Levitate and Mixed Bulk. Just kind of wanted to try and keep it as even as possible in defense and um, special defense. This was uh, an interesting one to build. I had to put Hidden Power Ice on it. 
for me to be able to really even damage the Gliscor and the Mega Altaria. But I think actually it worked out with just uninvested special attack, Hidden Power Fire would be able to break a substitute of a max HP Mega Altaria, which is all I needed really. Um, Overheat is just there for powerful stab. My, Weaver, my opponent does have Weave Armor and Scizor, so this is a really nice Scizor check as well as Mega Altaria, so it's multi purpose. Um, but the reason I'm mostly sort of spadef on this thing, I say mostly, I'm even defense, but I've put a lot of investment is just to cover the fact my opponent might bring. He could bring a physical or special um, Mega Altaria, but this build of Rotom Heat covers both because it'll either be Hyper Voice, Fire Blast, Roost, Coverage Move, which probably won't hit this thing too hard, maybe Dragon Pulse. Um, or if he's physical, return an earthquake, which he'll have Dragon Dance and Roost, or Dragon Dance and Heal Bell, or Roost and Heal Bell, to which point um, my Rome Heat can actually just kind of wall that thing and chip it away with Hidden Power Ice. Um, I do have Toxic on Alamomola, which I'll come on to in a minute, um, which helps chip that thing down. Um, but yeah, it's just a really decent check to um, Mega Altaria. Um, and Scizor, and that's literally the only reason I bought it. Um, it's my only electric type. And while I didn't want to bring Superior to this game, it's also going to do nice damage to Blastoise if I can chip that thing down as well. Volt Switch does about half. Um, I couldn't fit Thunderbolt on, which is a shame. But um, yeah, I think this moveset is probably the best I could I could really sort of fit onto this team. So that's Rotom Yeet. Um, next up we have got the Gardevoir, something I've wanted to use for ages. Um, we've gone for Shadow Ball, Moon Blast, Heal Bell, Hidden Power Fire. So when I initially built the team, um, I initially had this thing as a Scarfed Gardevoir because I wanted something offensively to check the Mega Altaria but then when I realised more and more that I can actually just kind of out bulk the Mega Altaria I wasn't too bothered about bringing offence um, so I kind of bought bulky offence Gardevoir because I didn't need the speed because if you look at his team speed tiers they're not great um, yes Gliscor and Miltank will outspeed me but I'll be able to do a whole lot of damage with um, Modest Moonblast even though it's you know even though it's just stab it's not super effective anything like that Moonblast is going to do a ton to either of them especially if they're physically defensive and not specially defensive um, my opponent has what Scizor, um, Placephalon and uh, Dublade as fairy switching so Scizor's a fairly reliable one um, however, I wouldn't consider Dewblade or Blacephalon reliable switch-ins because Blacephalon takes like 40% from a Moonblast and I don't know how much Dewblade takes, I imagine nowhere near as much but Shadow Balls still do a lot of damage and I have Hidden Power Fire as well for all the, well for Scizor and Dewblade if he does decide to bring it. Otherwise outside of Scizor I don't really consider him to have much of a switch-in to this thing so I can just kind of spam Moonblast with it which is lovely and with max HP and leftovers it just kind of lets me sit there and eat some hits. It's my best answer to Blastoise really because I don't have much in my draft um, or all this team rather for a Blastoise switch in other than Alamomola but I need to scout if my opponent decides to bring Toxic or not because keeping my Alamomola healthy is going to be key because as I'll get on to in a minute it's my best answer to a lot of things on this team. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I can sort of explain for Gardevoir because I think it's quite self-explanatory looking at his team. He doesn't deal with fairies well if he doesn't decide to bring the Scizor or the uh, Dewblade. Uh, next up, we're actually going to go on to Alamomola. Um, this Alamomola is, as you can see from the EVs, <laughs> I went into a lot of detail with this. Um, I didn't need as much HP as I thought I would on this thing because it's just got naturally huge HP stat, which is lovely. Um, I decided to put a lot of physical bulk in to this set but I also put a lot of special defense in and I've put 52 attacks, uh, 52 EVs into special attack as this allows my ice beam to guaranteed break a um, substitute from a max HP Mega Altaria. Um, this is my primary switch into Altaria, if he wants to set Dragon Dancers up in my face that's absolutely fine, if he wants to sub that's fine, I can show him that I can break his sub unless he's max for death, at which point he's not going to be doing much damage to me anyway. Um, I will sit there and I will toxic it. If he doesn't sub, brilliant, he's on a timer. Um, I can switch in and out of this thing and Rotom to recover from leftovers, from regenerator, and I can easily stall that thing out. Um, it's just a really good one against a lot of his team. It's going to be my answer to Weavile, other than knockoff, but if I do lose my leftovers, so what? I've got regenerator, I've got wish, and he can't really touch me after that unless he starts setting up sword stance, but he will then have to take school burn chances, which you might not want to do on a Weavile. Um, Lycan Rock again deals with the Lycan Rock really, really well with that huge HP stat and the decent physical bulk. Um, 
It deals with Mega Altaria alongside Rotom Heat. I don't think it could take on all of these things on its own. I, that's way too many checks in one mon. Um, and the Dublade, potentially, as well. Just lots of things in general. The, the only thing that you can hit me with super effective stab is Zeb Striker. I don't see Zeb Striker coming because I have a lot of things that can kind of deal with it fairly effectively. Um, that's Alamon Mola, really. Toxic... The bulky things like Blastoise. My game, I should have gone into, I should have said this at the start. My game plan going into this was to do um, bolt, uh, chip down or kill the Gliscor and the Blastoise and then sweep the whole team with extra drill because other than Gliscor and Blastoise, he, he can't take hits from extra drill. Um, it's quite scary. It's the first time I've had extra drill in draft and it's quite scary at how well it matches up against a lot of things. Um, so that was my original game plan. So the Toxic is really going to help with the Blastoise aspect, and he can't keep a Gliscor in on this thing, because I do have Scald and Ice Beam. Could potentially even get a Scald Burn if he decides to switch in the Gliscor for some reason before he's got Toxic Heal, uh, heal off on it. So that's the Alamomola. Um, second to last one we've got is the Tyranitar. Um, with Crunch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, Stealth Rock, Chuppleberry. Um, max HP, a lot of special defense, some physical defense. Again, I just kind of went... Uh, sort of middle ground on the defences because I didn't really know what I needed um, but in the end actually this thing I kind of bought for a Blacephalon because it, I, just, I thought if he bring, I, mean, I wasn't sure if he was going to bring it, he could have because it hits hard but then I look at my team and I'm like I don't actually think it gives me that much of a problem because Alamomola, oh that's why I put lots of special defence in, Alamomola is built to deal with um, <laughs> Blacephalon as well, it's like five different things um, because if he does want to lock himself into Shadow Ball, that's fine. I can just go into this thing. And because Blacephalon can't get Focus, doesn't learn Focus Blast, and can't, oh, he can't get Hidden Power Fighting because of the guaranteed IVs uh, on those things. I think it's three guaranteed Perfect IVs, which you can't you can't have Hidden Power Fire with three Perfect, uh, not Fire, sorry, Fighting. Tyranitar is just a very good check to Blacephalon, and it gives me free Sandstorm every time Blacephalon's in, and it gives me potentially a chance to pursue. I wanted to fit Pursue on, but I figured Ice Punch and Fire Punch were too good um, a move to turn down. I can take hits from the Scizor, especially with the Chopper Berry, because it means I can live Superpower, unless he's setting up, um, and I can set my Stealth Rocks up. Crunch is just against his team, he doesn't have many Dark Resists. I think his Dark Resist is Weavile and Mega Altaria, but then I have Ice Punch on this thing as well. Because it just like generally covers his team quite well. Like, these three moves just allow me to hit his team pretty much neutral, super effective overall. Um, and the bulk is just enough. So I decided to put the rest in attack and adamant. So it allows me to hit hard. It's kind of bulky offense, I guess, to an extent. But its main job is basically to set up the sand for Excadrill and Stealth Rock. Now, a bit of an issue on my behalf when building this team. I completely forgot the fact that I can rock day which my opponent has, has Sand Rush. Um, so I realised kind of as I was about to go into the battle, that was something I completely overlooked. So I'll definitely try and remember that for next time. And if you are building a Sand team against a Lycan Rock Day, I would recommend you remember that too. Um, because once I realised that, I kind of had to change my game plan a bit. Um, but yeah, Tyranitar Excadrill just does too much work to my opponent not to bring it, despite him having something that uses Sand Rush even better than Excadrill, potentially, because it's a lot faster. Um, that's Extra's role, it's pretty much here as a Blacephalon check. If he brings in Blacephalon, it's a free crunch, it's a free defense drop potentially on something, or it's free rocks. Um, that's that's pretty much the only reason I've bought Tyranitar. And finally, um, I've alluded to it many times already, uh, we've got the Extra Drill to take on the Sand Rush Sweeper role. Iron Head, Earthquake, Magnet Rise, Swords Dance. Um, the speed is enough to outspeed a Scarfed Weavile, I believe. Um, or no, it's enough to outspeed a plus two Mega Altaria. Um, I didn't need anything else other than Earthquake and Iron Head, if I'm honest. Um, I looked through the move pool that Excadrill got, I got, and I, I couldn't really find anything else that I needed. So Magnet Rise is just kind of what I put in there in case I outsped the Gliscor and I could potentially set up on the Gliscor. Because if I if I'm levitating against that thing, um, there's not a lot it can do other than U-turn or knock off. You can't knock me off because I'm a Z move, Stelium Z as you can see, um, or Acrobatics which I resist so, uh, and also I haven't knocked him off so it won't do much damage, so there's not a lot that thing can really do to me. Um, he's also a very angry mole, I just realised he has zero happiness. Um, but Iron Head, I think, what is it, plus two Stelium Z Iron Head does kill a max defence Gliscor, which was my main worry. And the reason I was so concerned I need to take out Blastoise, which I very much expect, because I struggled to switch into Blastoise, like I said. Um, 
I kind of struggle against that thing with, with this, but if I get some chip on it, I can then just kill it with plus two earthquake. I'll live a skull, just because I'm bulky, and I just have to hope I don't get burned. Um, but yeah, the, the Excadrill, I mean, look at his draft, look at the coverage earthquake and iron head hits, at least neutral, if not super effective. Spoilers, it's a whole lot of the team. Um, so th this set was quite simple for me to build. If I get it in, in the sand against something that doesn't have a good matchup, or the uh, Gliscor, which is weakened, I can Magnet Rise on the Gliscor, Sword Stance freely on a switch where if he stays in, and then run right with Earthquake and Iron Head because he doesn't have switchings to it. Um, that's pretty much the team. I, I, if, let me know what you think because I don't normally do team builders and I don't know if I've gone into the team in enough detail and I know I haven't sort of mentioned abilities uh, as much or um, Potentially, I might have gone over some moves specifically on some mons. Um, let me know what you guys think of this team builder because I don't normally do it. But I think you guys are smart enough to realise what I'm trying to do with this team, what it's what for, because you've got the lists underneath me here. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, I plan on putting this up on Friday, I think. Hopefully, the video will be live for you guys tomorrow, the Saturday. Um, I just need to sort in a, a time with my opponent. Um, but you guys should definitely check it out because it's a really good game. Um, and then. Yeah, spoilers, I've already played the game, so I know what the result is <laughs> with this team, um, as you'll soon find out. But yeah, I'm rambling now, so if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the team, the draft, because I really do like getting your guys' thoughts on things, more than anything else, really. I like the comments more than the views and likes, and especially dislikes. So um, yeah, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you did enjoy like I said, leave a like. Check out the video tomorrow. Check out my opponent as well. I'm sure he'll put a team builder up put his thought process behind his team and his side of the battle as well because it's always nice getting someone else's perspective of things um thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time bye